Welcome back everyone to another video and this is a very special one and I've been looking forward to it for a while. Uh, today this is a showcase and review of uh, the Pinebook Pro uh, and yeah I have it here and it's awesome. So for those of you who don't know I've been using this for a while almost a week before I wrote started writing the review started actually using it. And it's been amazing. So before I start with uh, any of the details and we start going inside it and open it up, I really like to thank the people from Pine64 who have sent me this unit under the ARM developer program and uh, they did a big uh, giveaway donation to all the ARM innovators. And yes, this has been an amazing device. I've been using it so far. So let's start with the outside. You know, it's fairly blank and there's nothing much on the top or the, at the bottom at the bottom you might see you would have regular phillips screws to open uh, open it up we'll go through that in a while i haven't opened it up so i don't know what to expect only from the images that i've seen um, apart from that we have io right here so we have io right here we have a usb type c a usb type 3 a port and a dc volt in uh, now the charger in or the dc plus 5 volts can charge the pine book or pro or you can just use the type c as well which both of those charge it very well and i've checked both of them on the other hand you have your uh, slower io which is your micro sd card slot i have a 128 gig card in there and your headphone jack and your regular type a port and that makes up the entire IO of the Pinebook itself. Right, so opening it up, it's a pretty solid lid. So not, um, you know, not going to be an issue there. Uh, we have your trackpad and as you can see, it's been well used. It's fairly dusty because, you know, it just shines on a black surface, but I've used it a fair bit. So this is your keyboard, very standard layout. I have the US ANSI keyboard and uh, it actually feels pretty good to type it's not mushy uh not super clicky but you know it's actually well spaced and once you press it it actually gets pressed there's no keystroke missing from what i've experienced and you know it's nice to type so you can actually keep your hands keys are well spaced that's one of my concerns as i'll be comparing it to another similar device uh, down the road and you will see why I like this keyboard a lot better you have a, your power button here a few indication LEDs a couple of mics and a 720p webcam I think so up top the display is really good uh, so let's power it on so I can show you the display as well you press it for a while and it comes on and here we should be able to see the display light up In a second, you can see the red power LED started. That means it's in the internal boot mode. And there's the display. So the display itself is a very, very nice 1080p display uh, in terms of color reproduction, black depth, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and it's at 13 inch, it's like the perfect resolution to screen size. Uh, never really bothered me uh, from that point of view. So let me just log in. So it comes really preloaded with Manjaro, which is uh, just as fine uh, on on sort of the bonus note uh, it actually uh, uses the upstream kernel with some out of tree patches that are soon to be upstreamed apart from that it has the wi-fi firmware enabled it has pretty much everything enabled there are a few things that still buggy in upstream and that's being fixed as we speak so uh, it, the, you know the situation even might change once this video comes out so i'll update it accordingly the max brightness on this thing is also pretty darn decent. Uh, so one of the things that's not working at the moment is US display over USB Type-C. So for the entirety of the video, if I have to show you guys something on the display, it's going to be like this, where the camera can record it directly. So one of the few things I've been excited about, as I said, is the upstream uh, tracking kernel. So it's currently at... 5.8.10 which is pretty neat uh comes with upstream's graphic uh graphics driver so um which is the the reverse engineered pan graphics driver for the rk3399 so that's all uh, open source and upstreamed so gl mark 2 if i run it uh and you can see like the graphics is working fine 
and on the other hand you can actually see that it's using the pan frost mali driver and uh, which is like very very exciting i, I recently gave a talk it will now to connect about all the different sorts of graphic drivers and this is like something that intrigues me so again this is a device that comes out of the box with open source reverse engineered graphics driver like this laptop seems to be a hacker's paradise at this point and you'll see the hardware hacking side of things when i pop the lid once um once we're done with the os itself uh comes you with your standard uh firefox browser and uh, so there's some ongoing work with video decoding as well but for the most part uh, youtube works just fine and you can take a look right there as well so if i go to and just play back my latest video like it's working fine and the audio is working as well um so you can basically just go ahead move it to 1080p and full screen it and it should run everything just as expected and there you go so you know that's working fine that's usable enough here's my face um yeah the wi-fi is also working well you have your dual band uh 2.5 g and uh 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz wi-fi working so i've connected to my network and there are others around here as well i mean i don't really have anything to say about the os itself because it's pretty much feature complete at this point um i have been working with the team at fedora to uh try and debug um actual fedora os on it so soon we sh i should be running fedora like they already have it working uh, there's some u-boot up uh, there's some U upstream u-boot implementation that needs to go in uh and for that i have to pop the back off but i wanted to sort of not you know not take the back off before i did started doing the review so you know here we are um uh, again as i said the keyboard is really nice um so this is priced at 200 dollars and I have a very similar device, actually a very, very similar device. So same amount of RAM, which is four gigs, same amount of storage, which is 64 gigs uh, AMMC and pretty much the same IO, but it's a lot different than this one. So you need to think like this is not a huge company. Pine64 is not a big company, but they've pulled this off. They've had a nice metal body, like the body doesn't flex. There's very minimal screen flex. If you take the body itself, there's almost no flex at all, you know, um, apart. Um, and then keyboard itself is like there's absolutely no typing flex whatsoever. This is all solid. I can press it on here as much. It's not going to flex well while i type and like it's a very very solid construction now the other laptop i have is also a very solid construction but it misses a few points so the one i'm going to compare it to is the chromebook uh this is the closest thing i have to the pinebook 64 because it's basically the exact same hardware uh apart from so there's a few major difference you have two usb type c's instead of the type a port and then you have your regular uh, regular um, audio jack and everything else is just similar you open it up it's tiny like you know the keyboard is a bit more cramped so instead of having this much area so you can see the size difference um, and it costs the same as the pine 64 the other thing i hate about this is the screen like the screen is kind of vivid but not as much as the pine book not as uh, deep blacks but also like it's tiny look at those bezels like it's huge and also very 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 low risk this is not even full hd sure you can fold it like that and do your tablety things um you can hold it like that but holding a 13 inch device like this in your hand it becomes kind of uncomfortable so i'm not really uh, annoyed with pine 64 not for not making it foldable the other thing is that on chrome os this thing lags like hell like chrome os needs a lot a lot of power to run for whatever reason again it's based on chrome and i've not have it run very smoothly on this device since the last few updates i've tried dev channels i've tried uh normal channels but they just don't seem to work uh, you get an OS upgrade and then it's just slow so you know 
uh, opening up anything or running multiple tasks at once especially if i need to just go ahead and like run linux on it uh it's going to be a problem and then a lot of de debugging stuff aren't isn't enabled so you can't just plug in your usb ttl device do something only arduino and android devices can be debugged and you know updated and you know, all sorts of hacky stuff hardware hacking but not like in a general way so the os on this feels very very limiting um but when, when it comes to something like the pine 64 it's running your regular gnu linux and you know it's it's like using a regular lab laptop it's it feels mm -hmm. at home you can use all your linux mm -hmm. tools uh, whether you're running manjaro whether you're running fedora whether you're running anything else it's the same thing uh, you can let's load any operating system you want uh, you have a lot of expandability options so um, just as the uh, chromebook the ram cannot be expanded but pretty much everything else goes like you have an internal mvme slot so you can basically just add a m.2 storage a terabyte two terabytes you know choose your poison and it should work just as well so i'm just waiting for it to shut down completely now let's open it up see what's under the hood and take it for a spin and see what we can do so um in this video i will just open up the laptop itself i am not going to debug it i'm not going to run any tools on it and all i want to do is just to show you all the internals of this thing so let me just find find the correct bit sure And here we go. The um, laptop is disassembled. And I'm entirely unsure what this cable was for. What these are for, but we'll have to see. So um, this is it from the inside. This is the Pinebook uh, 64. You have your CPU here, obviously, from the huge heatsink and the CPU itself. Uh, you have a big, I think this is the keyboard matrix strip. Uh, the dis this is the touchpad strip. The display strip might be somewhere underneath. Um, apart from that, that's the battery. So all the battery pins go in here. Not sure what this is for. Um, okay, so um, this is the battery and this the cables that i was saying that are not plugged in are actually direct power plug-ins so if you want to power the pinebook pro directly from the dc barrel jack without the battery installed then this is the way to do it you bypass this uh kind of a hacky way but again it's uh you know it's a project system um so one of the things that i'm surprised is that the uh ssd mounting is not installed so this is your uh, in so it looks like my pinebook pro doesn't come with an nvme uh, adapter so which is which would usually plug right down here so i'll have to figure that out uh, how i can get one of those um but apart from that i'm also kind of concerned about the exposed contact pins here so what i am going to do is to add some heat resistant uh, and you know non-conductive tape so that you know just in case there's vibrations and stuff it doesn't cause things to happen that shouldn't happen and
so a few more notes on this uh i want to remove it so yeah so here's the rk3399 in all its glory as you guys can see um this is what it looks like so i'll put it back uh, snugly just over the sock but not over the sock same as before wait a second this is like a paste it's not like a pad it's more of a pasty consistency but yeah so we have a very tiny switch right there now that switch is used to disable emmc if you want to like debug the spi flash or something and this switch is the audio or uart switch so the way it seems to get uart out of this main board is going through the uh, headphone jack so you switch it off uh switches to uart mode and then you get your uart over the headphone jacks for which i'll have to see what the pinout it is you have your reset and your um power buttons right there or is it mask rom yeah so the reset and recovery button here i wonder if there was a power button yeah i mean you can turn it on just pressing the reset button that's fine as well uh you have your antenna socket right here apart from that i don't see a whole lot uh, the memory is actually removable so you can plug it off. I don't know how much power the battery is providing at the moment So I don't want to gen like actually plug it off, uh, but it's a removable module. You can upgrade it That's why they specify the amount of memory so that you can actually just remove it once uh, as and when required uh, beneath this there's nothing of uh, importance apart from like maybe the SPI flash is there or maybe it's somewhere else so um the e-display connector would be underneath here so you can see i'm not i'm not um really tearing it apart because i really like this i want to put it back together and use it as a daily driver as i've been doing for a while to write some documentation and other things like that it's a nice laptop to like put on your lap sit and do work on so yeah, so here's your sort of a daughter board for your USB type A audio and SD card. This is very common. Um, and this is your main motherboard and most of the space is just battery. You can have your expansion slots here. I'm still kind of annoyed that I didn't get it with the uh, PCIe extension. So, you know, I'll probably have to wait for it or ship it from somewhere else. And we'll see about that. But for now, this is the Pinebook Pro and I am enjoying it a lot. Um, as and when things develop with you know uh, other operating systems with getting fedora working on it with mainline u-boot and all the things like that i will let you all know but for the time being uh, this is running manjaro and it's been a, a great great experience to work on this so thank you so much once more to the pine 64 people and uh, arm developer program to for providing me with this laptop uh, as part of the arm innovator giveaway so thank you so much i'll link everyone down in the description as well as on um on the video itself so you can go, go ahead and visit them and if you're looking to buy a hackable laptop i do recommend uh, getting one of these this is one of the more easier designs to get through security during immigrations um and you know a lot of hacked 3d printed laptops have issues uh, you always get pulled back but with this this looks pretty genuine um the only one uh so the, I, I do have a few complaints with this um it doesn't go without saying you know nothing's perfect it's their first try and i do have a few complaints and i'd like to have a few improvements um so for the first thing is the ram now this is not like fine 64's issue that the ram is just four gigs it's more of an issue of the sock so the next time they build a laptop whether it's with rock chip or someone else rock chip has really great open documentation and i love that so i hope they do it with rock chip again but then choose a sock that you can at least have eight or 16 gigs of ram on it uh, that really helps on on even on day-to-day -day tasks the other thing is breaking out of uart um, i don't necessarily like the switch on switch off thing with the audio jack i would rather have 
a separate micro USB port seems like there's enough space right here a separate micro USB port with an FTDI chip on board so you can, you can just plug it in and it works so Chromebook uh, does something similar but it's called a SCSI cable or SCSI cable not SCSI of course not SCSI it's called a SCSI cable it's a special white uh, orange cable which is very expensive so that beats the purpose um, that's why I'm saying have the FTDI chip in there but you just plug into this USB type C port uh, and it spits out uh, serial detail on the other end apart from other debugging stuff so um, they do it using like a management controller inside so you, they have another small micro that does all of that for them but the, the easier way is just to route uh, a mic, uh, couple of UART lines onto here, have a FTDI chip and then a micro USB port right there and that would have made it gold. So RAM and micro USB chip and just give everyone the PCI Express like NVMe slot, I'd like you know, why make it optional? I never got that. Um, kind of kind of sad about, about that. So we'll, we'll see if I can uh, get a hold of a extra uh, micro usb or oh, sorry uh m.2 pcie ssd uh adapter for the pinebook pro because it's uh it's a pro it's a proprietary connector not don't i don't entirely want to say proprietary uh but it's like they, they have their special uh flat flex cable that goes and so it's like it's not a generic thing that i can just buy on amazon uh, anyways, uh, I hope you all like this review and there will be more. This was just sort of a quick look. Uh, the next thing I'll probably do uh, with, with this board or with this laptop is to get the UART working, get the, because I have flashed the SPI from the OS itself and it didn't seem to respond. So it's either that it doesn't like the EMMC card uh, being there or it's just not booting straight up without the EMMC being disabled. So the next thing I'll do is enable UART on the audio jack, figure how that works because it's not the first time, it's not the first board that does uh, UART over audio and I've kind of been not a big fan of that. Um, so figure that out, uh, disable EMMC, load up U-Boot, the latest one onto the SPI flash, boot Fedora and flash the EMMC with Fedora and hopefully that all works. Um, apart from that, thank you so much for watching. This has been uh, very nice to play around with. It's a very, very solid um, laptop uh, and for the price, I think it's really nice. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a hackable ARM laptop or just an ARM laptop that doesn't necessarily run Windows, uh, then I think this is a great alternative for the time being. Uh, the dual core, the dual Cortex A72s and the quad A53s uh, keep it going uh, just fine. In terms of CPU power, I don't really have much to complain. So thank you so much for watching. And again, once again, thank you for the Pine64 team for providing me with this wonderful beast uh, along with the ARM um, developer program. Thank you so much and I will see you all in the next one.